Well, hello, I'm Dr. Julia Royston, always uh, happy to bring you people, places, things, information, and tools to help you to, to be better and do better. And you know, my favorite, live your best life. So um, I have a young lady with me today and I want her to introduce herself, tell us where she's from and um, tell us how we can find her on social media. And get, I'll give you a second. I'll ramble for just a second so you can get your pen and paper ready because I know people who are listening to my shows are always um, searching, Googling, going on Facebook to follow um, the guests that I have while we're talking. So I gave you a second. Hopefully you got your phone or whatever you got to, to write down her name and where you can find her on social media. So um, take it away, Miss Mary Evans. Hi, my name is Mary Evans and I'm from the great state of Texas. And I'm a children's pitch book author, among many other things, a poet, a lyricist, a storyteller, an educator. I just do quite a bit of things. It's, I don't know what else you want me to say, Julia. <laughs> How do you go find you on social media? That's what I want now. Find me on social media at Author Mary Evans. Just simply like whatever you see on my Zoom background. Author Mary Evans on Instagram, on Twitter, um, Facebook, or you can find me at maryevans at gmail.com if you want to email me or maryevans.com is her website now this is the first thing that i've got to ask you even before we get into something else is that um i just want to point out to authors that are listening um people who are interested in writing books okay those are the first two people two two persons sorry that's wrong uh, grammatically but also people that are in a business uh, whether you have established an LLC or whatever classification your CPA has advised or your attorney has advised you to do. Or if you say, well, it's not really a, an official business, it's just like a side hustle. Do you not know that author Mary Evans, it's author Mary Evans, Mary E. Evans, Mary Evans. So you should be able to find her on social media. It shouldn't be, you should be able to go to Julia Royston, Julia, J-U-L-I-A, A, middle initial Royston, and you'll see me. I come up on the first page. If you do a search for me, I'm, I'm everywhere you want to be, but I come up quickly. If you have a um, Smith Jones name, really strive to either put what you do in front of your name or something where people can find you readily and easily. And it's branded across social media. I tried that one time, that Juju Royston thing. And then people were like, who is that? I don't know her because I don't go with that. I mean, that was a nickname I had when I was a, when I was a teenager. People would call me Juju or whatever. But that's not the name I go. My government name, as they say, is Julia Royston. A is Ann, is my middle initial. So my, my point to this, and this is just the introduction, is make sure that you're able to be found easily. And you're like, people don't follow me. People don't find me. Oh my gosh, nobody wants to support you. Boo, we want to support you. We want to know who you are. But if we can't find you, we can't support you. And especially if you have a relatively uh, common name, it's not common in what it is, but there's a lot of people with your same name. That's what I would say. Um, and, you know, Smith, Jones, Williams, you got, you got to be creative, but you also have to be consistent. So, yeah. all right. So I'm, I'm off that soapbox. Go ahead. Can I on that briefly? Yeah. So when I decided I was going to write and then have to deal with, with social media and the internet, um, uh, I went straight to Google and I started just Googling myself, uh, and I put my Mary Evans author, author Mary Evans, and there is a Mary Evans.com, but that's, uh, an, uh, an artist. Uh, and so I knew that was gone. So when I found author Mary Evans, I immediately went to Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and I captured those uh, accounts. And so a lot of times authors are like, I don't even know how to use Facebook. I don't know how to use Instagram. It doesn't matter what you don't know how to do right now, at least capture those names. So when you're in a situation like this, like if you see mine up here where it says author Mary Evans, I don't have five different handles for you to find me. I'm always going to be found at author Mary Evans. I've worked with authors who they've 
the, the Instagram is different from the Facebook is different from the Twitter is different. From oh, the, Lord. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I can't TikTok do well. Is something else. And yes. TikTok is even something else. And I'm like, oh, yes, it is. Yeah. So I don't have a I don't have my TikTok for that yet because I was just I just play around with it right now so I can be relevant and, and, and learn until I'm able to put the content that I want to put on there. But yeah, that's true. And the, the biggest fear that I have that I hear from authors is that they think when I tell them to go get it, that they have to go do something with it. That's not yeah, true. no. Save it. Just Save own it. it. Just own, own it. it. Own it. Mm-hmm. Own the website own too. It. Author Mary Evans. So, mm-hmm. Well, another thing too, while we're even talking about that, people don't realize that and authors don't realize, and this is the second tip, is that um, uh, it's in your writings, books, things of that nature. That's intellectual property. And just in case you didn't know it, there are intellectual property lawyers and attorneys who fight for people, for their rights, for royalties, for access, um, trademarks, patents, all of that is a part of intellectual property. And and what I did find out, uh, unfortunately, during COVID, I lost three clients to who, who literally passed away mm-hmm. and they didn't have COVID, but they had cancer. And so therefore I had to reach out to my attorneys to find, figure out what to do because some of them were on an old plan of mine and an old contract of mine and some were on a new contract, but it was just the whole point of what is my responsibility? What is their responsibility? And then realizing that some of the, um, heirs didn't have access to the author's um, uh, Amazon accounts and what that looked like. So we had to have conversations. It was a lot. So um, it was it was really kind of a scary process for me thinking about that intellectual property. So any book that you write, any song that you write, anything that you write is uh, can create a stream of income long-term, even after you're gone. Uh, It continues. It will continue. So just in case you don't know, intellectual property is not uh, something to take lightly and uh, realize that even though it, oh, I didn't sell that many books at first, uh -uh, it keeps going and it keeps growing and it will uh, live on and uh, your family members can uh, um, can make money off of your intellectual property even after you're go- long gone. Okay, so my next question is, what has been the inspiration for writing, period? What made you think to write, to write a book, period? Oh, to write a book? Um, write a book. I am a, I'm a poet, and so I love to write, and I love to write stories, and so most of my inspiration comes from either um, what I see, whether if it's uh, in person, or if it's something on TV, or I could be at church, I'm always uh, open to when I get a thought or an idea or a story or a poem or a song to just immediately just start writing. So my inspiration comes from everywhere. Sometimes it comes from anger, like uh, I did quite a bit of writing, not that I shared a lot on social media during COVID, but I, uh, there was a lot going on with the political stuff and uh, the election. So I had a lot of inspiration to write there and to document how I felt and and to really speak on how other people were feeling but couldn't articulate it in, in a written form. So that's an example of that. So when's the when when did you write your first po- poem? How old were you? Oh, that is a good question. You know, it's interesting because I'm not so sure I wrote poems when I was younger. It's as much as I wrote stories, I loved poems. Like my favorite book when I was a child was The House That Jack Built. I mm. just thought that was just such a cool book because it was kind of, I guess it was like pre, pre-rapping rhyming or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just, yeah. You know, uh, and at one time I did have it memorized, but as far as me trying to write a poem on my own, I think I was just inspired by the, the poetry. And my mom raised us. We read all of the nursery rhymes. And so... Uh, that I that idea of being creative and rhyming um, was just kind of something that I, I that just drew me in. But then when I started writing, writing, as far as a poem, I have to say my one of my first poems was when I moved to California in 2000. 
and uh, I wrote a poem and I was inspired by um, a guy. So, yeah. <laughs> so I, was, so I was a man involved. So, oh, well, oh my. It, it could turn into fiction, I can tell. It could, yeah, oh, God, yeah. And and so, fiction or something on like that. Oh, I understand. Yeah, and it's, yeah he was anyway. So, uh, right, uh, and it was weird because when I wrote it, it was. It, it, it was one of those indignation type poems, like, you know, and uh, <laughs> it was short and I had to get it out and, and it was <laughs> writing. And I was like, that was interesting. And then like the very next day I wrote another poem. And then the next day I wrote another poem and then the couple of days went by and all of my poems, the majority of my poems rhyme, such as uh, Thunder and Lightning. It's from a poem that I wrote. I wasn't even trying to write a children's picture book. I just happened to uh, get up one morning and write a poem um, from just the night before, I guess it was raining or something. And then that's how Thunder Lightning was birthed. But wow. yeah, it's a gift. Uh, I write songs, it's the same way. I usually write them from beginning to end in one sitting. It's something I don't take lightly, so. You're gifted, you're gifted. My first book was poetry too. So I um, I was go. it was after uh, my first marriage ended in divorce. But the, the the miracle of this is not one of those poems in there represents anything. He didn't get it. He didn't get any any part of my creative juices to go. Huh? None of that. <laughs> I didn't. He didn't get none of that. Sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't give him any of that. But my when I was in high school, um, one of my um, high school uh, graduation presents was um, Langston Hughes, a book of, of Langston Hughes's poems. I thought that was neat and interesting, but I really didn't get the poetry bug, really, until I saw Nikki Giovanni in person. Mm -hmm. Ooh, she came to Louisville, and we were at the uh, Kentucky Center for the Arts, and so yeah. around the world, uh, Nikki Giovanni, she is so small, but she is so powerful. Powerful, yeah. And, um, and, and just uh, incredible. I would have loved to have met Langston Hughes, but I feel like I met him through his poems as well, as well as um, the queen, Maya uh, Angelou uh, is the queen. And so, you know, having those inspiration, but I've only written one book of poetry. So it's not that I don't love it. It's not that I don't appreciate it. And I've written some things here recently, but. Um, you know, it's funny. For a collection. You, know, you got me thinking uh, about me writing my first poem. I, I, I My first poem really wasn't a poem. It was a, a song. And it was my senior year in high school that I can remember. I'm sure if I sit still enough, other things will come to my mind. But we had to do some type of creative activity about the presidents or something. And I did some, uh, it was a rap as actually, and it was to the, the tune of the beat of Be uh, Beastie Boys. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, what up? Come on through New York. Yeah, so it was like, and I don't remember it all. Here's a little story we have to tell about one something president. We know yeah. so far oh, yeah. way back in history. His name was John Madison. Da, da, da. I don't know. It was something like that. But I'm, now I'm going to be digging in my old high school. Yeah, you're going to have to dig, get, dig that out. So and, uh, yeah, so that was probably if I was writing something in a creative way, because I had to rhyme. It made sense to rhyme. And that right. was the 80s. And that was when, you know, rap hip hop was starting to really take off and I was drawn to that but <laughs> that's hilarious that's awesome. <laughs> uh, so that I mean that's amazing sometimes we don't even realize that we're being groomed for something even before it happens so those of you that that you know kind of uh, got that little notepad out and and you had it and it's a you know a notebook that you have and it's in a drawer by your bed uh, get that book back out uh, it, it's going to do some things and it's going to make some things happen. So we're going to take a break right here and we'll be back with more. Well, welcome back. I'm Julia Royston uh, with my good friend, Miss Mary Evans. As a matter of fact, we met at a um, the National Black Book Festival and that's a plug for the National Black Book Festival. If you uh, have never gone, hopefully we'll be there in uh, 2022. So um, follow us. If Even if you're not able to come, please be sure and follow um, the Black Authors TV, uh, Black Authors Matter TV, and uh, you'll be able to see various authors from around the world because we, we appreciate your support. So talking about books and authors and all that good stuff. So tell us about your book and tell us where people can buy it. And then also give me one or two nuggets for new authors, or even if not so new authors, just for authors, period. 
Okay. So uh, Thunder and Lightning is a it's a it's a children's picture book, a lively and engaging picture book between the two characters, Thunder and Lightning. So they get in this fight on a dark, dim Saturday night. And so they banter back and forth, kind of like playing the dozens. And so they go back and forth, back and forth. Thunder says something, then Lightning says something, and Thunder does something, then Lightning does something. And then you get all the way to the end, and then the question is, you know, trying to find out who won the fight. Uh, I wrote it as a poem that I'd written in 2006, literally, I think it's March 31st, 2006, I got up and wrote it from beginning to end in one sitting. And I remember writing the last word of the, the, the poem at that time, and I was like, that was different. <laughs> and then I used to host open mic poetry at a coffee house back home in Waco, where I'm from, and the folks who would show up every week as the host, I would warm up the mic by just reciting Thunder and Lightning because it was so easy, it's just a fun rhyming poem. You need to get that turned into a picture book. And so I was like, okay, that's odd. Never thought about that. And set, then that's what set the journey of me trying to get uh, self-published. And so uh, it's been out, like I say, since 2014. It took me six and a half years just to find an illustrator who could convey a really uh, good uh, example, a good depiction of thunder, because we know what lightning looks like, but thunder is a sound. Yes. So, I love my illustrator. He did an amazing job. He is out of uh, Europe. He lives uh, south of Portugal. And uh, from my book alone, he's he's gotten other authors, uh, contracts with other authors, which I thought was really cool because they've seen, who's your illustrator? I was like, well, he's never been to America. He does speak English, but he's Portuguese. And so uh, it's just been really fun. And he, he, he illustrated my book in five and a half days. That's how much he loved, loved, loved the manuscript because it doesn't have any human characters in it. He was able to create like a virtual, like a, a alternate universe. And uh, he just loved it. He wants me to, he wants me to do a sequel. He's been asking since day one, uh, but I wasn't trying to write the first type, the first installment. So that's what makes it a little difficult because all right, what would Thunder and Lightning do next? I don't know. Uh, and when I'm when I'm with uh when I go and when I was pre-COVID speaking to uh children at the book festivals and places like that, I would actually take my the actual manuscript of what I wrote that day and show the children and they would freak out. I was like, yep, that was just a random poem that I wrote. Don't throw anything away. Right, 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 right. Because you just never know. I know, but, I know. So where can they buy it? They can buy it uh at my website. Hold on. Sorry, someone's wanting to say hi. <laughs> Sorry, she's wanting. This is fake. The dachshund. <laughs> if I don't grab. Her, Those are just me. listening. I I think a four legged friend just joined us. Yes, so, this uh, is fake. Uh, you no know, noise is not barking, but a four legged friend did. Yeah, yeah she, she was just, whining. Yeah. She's all on social media herself. She's her own little star. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got clothes and outfits and the whole nine yards to prove yes. it so yeah 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 got the whole thing but so you can find can purchase. It, yeah you can find it at maryevans.com or you can uh, go on amazon uh if you want to only have a limited amount of on-hand copies left so you just have to just reach out to me and see if i do because they've been going flying off out of the that's a beautiful head. thing yeah that's a beautiful problem to have so mary e evans make sure there's two e's in the middle uh, MaryEvans.com is where you can purchase the book in hardback, softback, and of course get the ebook um, via uh, Kindle or, or Nook mm-hmm. and be sure and download that. So give me one or two nuggets for new authors. For new authors, uh, I'd say that in the world that we're living in now, particularly in um, the literary world online, that you have to be present. Uh, even if you especially because we're not doing a lot of face-to-face that if you're not posting anything on your social media account, or if you don't even have one, it's like, how can you find someone? How can you complain that people aren't buying your book when they don't even know you exist or your book exists? If you go to your Facebook page or your social media page right now, how can anyone know that you are an author? And furthermore, if you do post a picture of your book, how can they buy it? I see this every single day authors when they finally post a little old picture of their book they don't have a link (laughs) they don't even ask people to buy their book it drives me bananas they uh waste i call it real estate like this background is real estate it's like you got all this real estate and you're not 
profiting off it or yeah. if you people giving them a call to chat uh, uh, uh what is it called a call to action yeah that yeah and a call to action is here's my link buy my book or here's this you have to give them something to do you can't just post a picture because when i see authors post pictures of their books people are like yay congratulations but then they don't give them the link. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, but they want them to, well, it's on Amazon, but I'm like, boo. You yeah. Need people to search for it, and then you got to search the name. And Amazon's a, not making it easy for you to find the book no this more. This is a lazy generation. Yes. 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 Yeah, I, I, I found authors. I already posted that once, and McDonald's shows commercials all Every the Every hour on the hour. Yeah, that's it, it, right. And that's marketing. You have to be visible. If you go to Google authors and you go. Google your own book. Uh, if you uh, have someone who you. Sell them if they can, if you can share that. that and tag them if you're already connected with them as friends get that permission because that right there will pay off over and over and over again um so those are just some of the things but and get all of your social media in order even if you just post once a week or once a month but don't not post you have to be you have to be social you just exactly do. that's what social media is all about is being social and making sure that um that you know you getting it out there and getting it done so um so speaking of uh, uh social media um do you so you're i've got to move forward to your next business so um helping authors or helping business owners okay. because um i find that um authors are like well i posted my cover i mean i i that was good there wasn't a picture of you. There wasn't the link. We've already talked about that. But um, I, I'll be honest. I, I, I'm a customer. So I had a photo shoot done, but I didn't have a chance to get the, uh, uh, as they say, get my moles out. Mm -hmm. I'll, be, I'll confess, I got moles on my face. I didn't get it, it, it as they say, glammed up. Yep. So I need for you to tell me just a little bit about your uh, glamming business. And what that looks like and what that is like. Okay, so it's kind of twofold. Um, what happened was every year when we have the National Black Book Festival, uh, Gwen Richardson, who is the founder, along with her husband Willie, they give authors and they give them a template of the of the of a template flyer of the National Black Book Festival, so they can then add their contact information, their picture, whatever. And so what Gwen found was that authors would immediately email her back, go, I don't know how to do this. And she was like, that's not my wheelhouse. And she knows that I love making flyers, love making anything graphic, particularly in support of the National Black Book Festival. And so she said, Mary, if, if, you, if you are willing to make flyers for the authors, I will forward your information to them. I said, yeah, that's fine. So I came up with like a little package deal uh, just to put their face and their whenever they're going to have their speaking time and their website and contact information, their social media on there. And they only charge like 25 bucks. But then I thought about it. I was like, that's if, if I make the flyer for them and they post it on Facebook, it's and they try to post it on Instagram, it's not going to match because Facebook and Instagram have two different dimensions when you post. And so I started thinking again, I said, well, then I would look at the authors, their pages and their cover pictures or their profile pictures. I was like, ah, they, you know, people are going to be coming to your social media page. You might want to have a decent picture of yourself. And so it just kind of morphed. And then I said, oh, well, then it's going to be virtual. They might want to have a background. Then they don't have to reach and grab their book that's there the whole time while the uh, National Black Book Festival, their session is going on. And so it turned into this little package deal that I was offering, literally kind of giving away because it's worth way more than what I was charging. And that kind of birthed this idea of helping authors in the social media online atmosphere up their game and move from just being basic to a little extra. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, uh, and so as I was getting, they were paying me and I was looking at different software I was using, I was like, okay, 
it was Black Friday. I was like, I'm going to go ahead and buy the premium for this service, the premium for this service, the premium for this service, basically reinvesting into this so I can give the best quality type of service for any of the authors that need uh, that need services in the area of glamming up. And so then I was kind of, uh, what do you say? I was experimenting with myself. There was this one app and it was like, you know, it could change, it could add hair, it could make put makeup on your face, it could do a background. And I was like, I really like this. And so I went ahead and paid for the premium for that. And then I just started just sharing with different friends, authors, uh, relatives. I was like, what do you think about that? They're like, that is so cool. How'd you do that? And then I was like, well, Mary, you might want to, this didn't, you just didn't do this like this. It actually took a little time. And so I just came up with, uh, some what I felt like were reasonable cost of prices to charge the, the just different folks. And then it kind of morphed to, well, it's Christmas time. Well, let's see if we can make some Christmas greetings. So it's really everything that, that can be used year round, whether it's for an author who wants to do something for an occasion or just personally, um, New Year's is coming up, Valentine's Day is coming up. I make video uh, collages, which are really cool too. So it just all depends. Now, I am in Texas, so I can't go to Kentucky. I can't go somewhere to meet you. But if you can send me good, if you can send me a clean picture or give me an idea, I can come up with a really cool concept. And so that's what I've been doing, and it's been great. And so what I did was I Googled uh, "glam glam you up" and just G L A M up or Y O U up, and I was like, "Oh, that's been taken. That's been taken." So I went to all the different social media outlets and I found that if I just add an M and an extra U, it's G-L-A-M-M-U-U-P and that's my hashtag. There you go. So as I continue to, to pursue it, then I'll be able to capture the rest of the stuff. But right now it's mine. If you go to uh, hashtag G-L-A-M-M-U-U-P, you will find something that I've probably glammed up for someone. Yeah, me. Hello. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, my, my new stuff um, I, I definitely needed it glammed up. My face was horrific, but um, the, the picture is cute and all that, but mm -mm, I needed some help. So can we get your service at uh, maryeevans.com or we have to go to- You, can, you have to fi probably find me on social media. If you just uh, go to that hashtag, you can find me quickly, hashtag G-L-A-M-M-U-U-P, glam you up. Or if you just type in author Mary Evans, you will find me. I'm everywhere. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, IG. I'm on uh, TikTok. Yeah, so you'll see different type of creations. Y'all have gotten so many nuggets from us today. Did you know you could search a hashtag? Did you know when you put on hashtags associated with um, um, your posts that they are searchable? So you could put in uh, the pound sign hashtag and then whatever you're searching and you'll be able to find articles, polls, graphics, anything that you associate with that. So you should have a hashtag. Yes. Another, another hint. You should have a hashtag for your book, for your book title right. itself. You should That's have right. a hashtag for your name. You should That's have right. a hashtag if you have a business. That's you should right. have a hashtag for your events. And I've been to events and it, I have to confess it was an older crowd. And I, I raised my hand. I said, excuse me. Uh, what's the hashtag for this? Event? They were like, well, do you, Julia, you figured out what is it? Oh my gosh, we didn't even think about that. I said, no, if we're going to, I said, if people, when people post, so then I had to do a short tutorial. All right. So when people post their pictures, how are we going to find them? How are we going to get them? Because we don't know everybody here. And they was like, oh, so if we have the same hashtag, when you do hashtag the event, whatever the event name is, I don't know, event.com or event 22, yeah. whatever you'll be able to to find them and so so yes, you know when you when you come on here julia Royston gonna be teaching the people okay and mary evans is too <laughs> you can actually believe it or not they just started giving people i can't remember if it was on instagram facebook or twitter or uh tiktok it's probably like that on twitter as well you can now follow hashtags oh so yeah if you want to watch me grow and whatever like i, I you know i have thunder and hashtag thunder and lightning picture book because thunder and lightning will lend you lead you to just thunder and lightning but right thunder, right right thunder, like, picture book or when i write because my name is mary elizabeth evans so my pen name is mary m-a-r-y-e-e -E. so uh, if you do hashtag mary writes you'll see all my poems you'll see things i've written and those things work for you while you are asleep yeah and people when they find you when they find you in one place if you have a hashtag then it just, it's almost like it's a scroll that just opens up to show you everything they've done. 
Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, we're international. So this is an international show. So people are listening all over the world, literally. So that yeah. makes it very, a lot easier for people to find you. So that that is really key for me for branding, even more than, uh, yeah, logo, yes, your colors, yeah. All of that is included, but having quality content that is being, that is able to be found easily to me is more key for branding because now I'm going to, because I do, I'm everywhere and I have people who post for me, people who I, and, and I post multiplicity places as well. When they're all of a sudden able to walk up and say, oh, I see you on social media. Oh, I see you. Yeah. It makes all the difference in the world. And then people are um, more likely to feel like they already have a relationship with you. So then you say, well, they don't know me. Yeah, boo, they do. Because some people follow you for weeks and months and follow you for years and then realize, oh my gosh, she's coming in my city. I can actually meet her in person. And, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, there may be some psychos out there, but there are people who have come to my tables, come to the booths. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh my gosh, you're here. In, they're from my hometown of Louisville and they, and I'm in Charlotte and I'm in uh, Dallas and I'm in Chicago and I'm in, in Montgomery and then, ooh, I'm in Atlanta. And then I was over in Florence and then I was over. And then they say, there she is. She's, I mean, I can meet her in person and not just, as they say, be a social media friend or, or a stalker. Right. Something. But um, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Hashtag is free. It doesn't cost you anything. Exactly. 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 And if you use them enough, I mean, I know that you can eventually trademark them and all that. You have to get attorneys for that. We, we, I, I'm not an attorney, but I know that then I've done a trademark for uh, application. I'm waiting on my uh, final certificate to come in, but that was a part of the questions. Do you use that hashtag? Do you have the dot com? Do you uh, have you had an event in that name? Have you? Do you have the website in that name? And I was able to answer yes to all of that. Yeah. So you know, it's going to take me some time to defend. If somebody else wants to come for me, I might have to get a lawyer. You know, if they want to take it once I, especially after I get my final certificate. But believe you me, people, they are, you know, they're finding you. They know who you are. And uh, so I'm going to take another quick break right here, and then we'll be back with more. All right. And we're back. I'm Dr. Julia Royston uh, with Ms. Mary Evans. Honey, y'all should have a page or two full of notes and stuff you need to be thinking about or reaching out to her about or considering. You need to be going to Google, YouTube, something. Uh, especially if you're an author and you should be an author, you know, I'm all about writing those books and uh, making sure that your story and your message is out there, especially if you're in ministry, if you are um, a a speaker, if you're a coach, you should have a book that goes along with your message. So I have to ask, Ms. Mary Evans, what's next? What's on the horizon? What's next? A couple of things are on the horizon. um, And these are things that have been uh, working on and just sometimes it just takes a little while to get going but I'm working on my poetry book extracting I've written a lot of poems so uh, I think a lady named Julia Royce, Royston is that how you say it? <laughs> like you only can do 40 poems well least. I mean it's a good thing I mean if you got more than that okay another hint if you got 40 40 is a good number especially if sometimes they're longer and shorter because People's attention span about 75, 80 pages. So, <laughs> you know, that yeah, was my suggestion. Of, yeah, some of my poems are short. They're really short. Like that one I wrote about that guy is real short. Good. Short. He didn't deserve nothing but short. Hold well, on. He, well, he got, <laughs> he got, a few more after that came a little longer. So, uh, <laughs> starting to really bother me. But anyway, so, uh, but you know, so Portrait Book is on the horizon. I'm working on getting it edited. Uh, and I don't think, I have a clear title yet because I think since I have more than uh, 40 that it may be like a series, but they're, my poems are so different. They're all over the place. And so uh, I, I, I'm really uh, inspired by someone like Maya Angelou because her poems are all over the place too. So Yeah. Oh, well, I, I now, you know, t- speaking of poetry, that is, um, uh, you know, that's just a collection. And, you know, and they don't, you know, if you, if you're fortunate to I'll only write about faith or I only write about hope or I only write about good, but I'm not that girl either. I'm all, no, 
it's too minor and it's a span of over 20 years so it's funny reading some of the things from the early 2000s and i'm just like well that was interesting you know you know now uh, over 50 and i'm like these are different and so I, I see the growth but um you know that's exciting just to be able to say when did she write that and some things i've written you wouldn't know when i wrote it and others you can tell because of the climate that we're in you're like okay she wrote that last summer <laughs> <laughs> Uh, your mask do you have on your mask <laughs> well mine was more so i wrote a really long piece uh and it's called survival and it was about the mm. uh, greenwood it's about the tulsa massacre and uh that right there really struck me and i wanted to make sure that i posted it on social media that weekend of uh the June anniversary. oh yeah oh yeah, yeah i was yeah. working on that and i hate i didn't get out there I, if they go back out again there was a uh, child, the Black Child uh, Book Fair tour went out there. And I just really hate I missed that. I really yeah, hate I missed it. I might make a road trip because, yeah, it, it really got me in a lot of ways. Because I'm working also on a, it's on the books as a historical piece about my, my grandparents. And so... Um, Were they from there? No, but it's the whole idea of kind of pre, the early, early 1900s. Because I'm going to deal with in my historical, uh, it's a historical novel. It's like a love novel about my grandparents, but I want to weave the Jesse Washington story into it. The fellow who was lynched here in Waco, Texas, in downtown in the city square. So that's the cool thing about historical fiction. You, you, you can just, you know, use some history and then just mix it up. And so I want to be able to bring that in um, because a lot of people aren't aware of the, of the crazy atrocities that have happened uh, here, there, and everywhere. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so got that, and then I also have uh, my preteen series that is probably uh, very appropriate right now, um, and that's going to be in the works. Everything is just editing because my just as my poetry is all over the place, so is my writing. It's I mean historical novel, then a preteen series, then a children's picture book. I mean, so they're all over the place, which makes it a little difficult for me because I have to focus. <laughs> well <laughs> no but it but it it's not difficult for me because i enjoy it all yeah i so love I, it all it's just writer it, eclectic you know it's done like okay now it's done now do something and then i also because i'm you know i'm a lyricist i have songs that i've written and i wrote one called salvation that i really would like to after all these years have uh get it into ascap or have some choir sing it um because it's i love it it's a children's choir song and it's funny because just like that, my my songs that I've written are all over the place as well. Praise and worship, children's choir song, youth choir song, uh, ballads. I even I've never been married. I even have some uh, unity candle song that I wrote. And there's an audience for that. I know. And there's an audience for that. I mean, OK, so the beauty of and as you well know, you 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 taught when we we met at National Black Book Festival, you were in the children's section. And the children's section really was hopping over there. It was hopping over there. So um, that that really wasn't wasn't hard if you just had one book. But in other sections of the room, it was kind of difficult because if you didn't have an interest in that, people just kept moving. So, I mean, you know, but if you have multiple now, if you came back in the area where I was, there was two, well, there were four publishers there, but as far as having multiple authors with them, was me and another publishing group. And we had something pretty much for everybody. Okay. They just didn't like it or weren't that attracted to it. But we had fiction, nonfiction, children's, I had everything. So uh, the, the, the key to having multiple genres is that you attract multiple audiences. Now there yeah. are no guarantees, but you attract multiple audiences. And I think the cool thing about me having the children's picture book as being my like, the groundbreaking book is that as I progress into these other genres, it shouldn't be difficult because I've, I mean, you write about things that you're familiar with and you can engage in. So when I, when I get, get into the devotionals or I get into other things of that nature, uh, by historical fiction, I'm excited to share whatever with whomever. And I, you know, you, you talked about being at the festival. I, I saw some of those authors and i saw how they were just sitting around waiting for people to come just jump on well, them okay <laughs> see <laughs> yeah i was trying to be nice see i was trying to be no, i'm gonna say I it but to be nice see no i'm gonna say it because you know i i i did the seminar for, for seven past seven years on social media 
and social media is not just when you're online, it's what you're putting online. So if you're at an event and you're not posting anything or you don't have your book or something. And so those, but those are things that I've come to realize that they, they just didn't know. I really think that when authors say, I'm gonna write a book. And the question I always ask them every time when someone reaches out to me, I want to write a book, Mary. I'm like, really? Okay. Here's my question. Is this for like a bucket list? Or you want to do something with this? Because doing something with writing this book is more than just, you can go to Kinko's and get it printed if you just want to see your name on the bottom of some, some printed material. But if you're going to go beyond just writing a book, it's going to be a lot of work. This is an industry that is a beast within itself. Yes, it is. Not to scare anybody, but it's not, it's not as easy as you think. It takes work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Our, our people who are establishing publishing companies and and they may outsource but they don't know from start to finish I, I was at an event and the young lady was like well whatever Julia said I'm like that means you don't know your industry you just know the 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 glam and the whole let's have a party and all that just say you do book events don't say you're a publisher but you know it would just anything you should know the start to finish about that process it should be something that you're ongoing learning constantly yeah, I'm you learning it story. constantly. You have, there's nothing about the, being an author or book publishing uh, in any of this industry and you think you're going to hold on to something that you learned one, oh, the, the last 16 months. Yeah. Things have changed. Everything I, changed. Everything changed. I was I was in depression for when, when, what did the world shut down? March 13, March, 2020. Yep. Okay, so March 13, 2020 was a Friday, hallelujah, and not during the week. Because then I had Saturday and Sunday to say, what am I rolling out Monday? Because I got to be ready Monday. I can't just sit up in this house and panic and, and freak out. I've got to, so what are we going to do? So what are we going to do? And, you know, between prayer and, ah, you know, getting on the phone and my husband and everything else, I came out swinging on Monday and didn't stop. So I yeah. haven't stopped. But, yeah. you know, you can't, it's not like you're going to be able to say, Oh, I'm good, and and hang up your hat, and I'm good. No, yeah. baby, it's every day. It's something new. It's it's funny because on one of the a Black Authors Matter TV shows, it was a month ago because I'm always taking notes whenever I'm, I'm watching that every Tuesday night from seven to nine Central. Uh, Gwen was, had a guest on, and I can't remember exactly what the context of it was, but I I remember she said this one thing that I may actually use for a book title one day. Don't take it from me, people. <laughs> So uh, it was, uh, she said, well, these, you see, with the change and pandemic and what they right. had going from, you know, in person to virtual, she said, well, you got to pivot, pivot, or you're going to get left behind. Yeah. You yeah. Pivot, or you're going to get left behind. And I was like, that is so true. But some people didn't take that. They didn't, the pivoting thing was like, pivot where? Pivot to who? Pivot to what? And I'm like, they had all those free. They had yeah. all those free videos. They had webinars. They were still free. Charging for nothing. They, would, yes. they had all that stuff to walking you through step by step for business owners as well as authors. I mean, there was so much free information. And a lot of people just got in the bed and covered up their head. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's still I, there, though. That free information is still there. It's never too yeah. late. I mean, you just have to just get up and get going and remind yourself that this is, uh, this is, it's a, an ongoing process that you just, if you just do a little bit at a time instead of doing nothing, because even if you wanted to be successful, I, I used to say that too. I was like, people who want success have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> no, they don't know. And they don't know what, they don't know how much, how much uh, work it is and the falling down and getting back up and scraping your knees and putting a bandaid on and getting your feelings hurt and, and getting your head chopped off and then sewing it back on and then, you know, and then spending money and you didn't get what you were supposed to get in return and then uh, getting your money together again to invest in another direction, hopefully, and then another result uh, eventually. But, um, you know, businesses and entrepreneurs and remembering as an author, the final thing, the author, this is the book business. This is a business, baby. It's not, it's not just for play. And you're right, Mary. Is it on a bucket list? Are you really one? Is this going to be a platform builder? Is this something, a message that's in your spirit, that's in your belly, that burns and keeps you up at night and, and wakes you up early in the morning? Then I know how serious you are. Then 
I know uh, what what I'm dealing with. And just see people say, oh yeah, girl, we're going to make a lot of money that does after 14 years in this business. <laughs> I'm not impressed by that at all. I just sit here with my with my hand on my face going, okay, let's just keep talking. Baby, we, we're not getting ready to get excited about that. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be, if you're going to do it just for the money, you're going to be in trouble. Oh my gosh, you're going to be miserable get, and in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. It has to be that God has put something inside of you and yeah. you know you have to get it out. Donnie McClurkin just randomly, I saw him because he goes live like, every night he's in rome right now and he was like finish it i was like is he talking to me <laughs> he said, finish it i was like yes sir <laughs> i knew yeah, i got a book talking. right now i gotta finish i gotta finish it yeah. before january 1st and you, I, you know i know i, I know yeah. what january is already coming up on me with so I, I don't have much to go but i probably i'm behind halfway I and mean, then it's my uh, book three of Terrence is terrific, but I've got to finish because I cannot get, I can't get back because it's got to be ready by February. So I, I yeah. put that on, you know, as I said, I don't, I don't have to have anybody put any pressure on me. I put all the pressure on myself. And yeah. this is the first book and you'll have that too. It, it, because people are looking for your, your illustrator started it when the illustrator said, okay, where is book two? What's the sequel? I have a list of people, an email list of people waiting for book three of Terrence the Terrific. I've never had that before, ever. They're like, like put us on the list. <laughs> hey, so what do you know? So I'm like, oh, by the 31st, okay, by the 1st, okay. You know, it has to be done. It has to be finished. So, you know, I have that on top. Mary Evans, you know, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, always a pleasure talking to you. Always you a pleasure. <laughs> I always start thinking about and rambling and talking about so much stuff related to authors and writing but that's the reason why iron sharpens iron yes you must be around you cannot we said this even before we started recording that you must be around other people who do what you do you cannot do this solo can't do it now you 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 know you may want to write by yourself and alone but when you come out of that writer's den or your writer's hut or whatever you're in you have got to be around other people because they must spur you on and they must keep you going so thank you love okay. it has been a hold you accountable too because yeah I know. yeah that too hold you accountable as well and and hopefully if they're true friends they'll be rooting you on and believe you me i am rooting a lot of people on and i think thunder and lightning is is a wonderful it's colorful it's a a beautiful and well-written book it can be um, um put in multiple genres it is um something that can be for schools, for STEM, for science, all of that good stuff. So be on the lookout. Go to maryeevans.com, get the hardback, get the soft cover, download the ebook, um, make sure that you have it available. There will be a revised, I'm just going to put it out in the atmosphere. It's going to be a revised edition. So get ready to recommend it to your schools, to your libraries, so that they can have it um, and make it available for their students. Uh, we're, we're working, we're all of us, especially in the children's book industry and arena, we're working to provide books that will be for a diverse audience and will appeal to a wide audience of children. And um, that's, that's kind of my retirement gift. Uh, I was a librarian law, medical school librarian for 30 years. So this is my uh, return investment into what was imparted into me. So you all be blessed. I'm Dr. Julia Royston uh, of Live Your Best Life, praying today, tomorrow, and always that you live your best life. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.